Hi, this is Keith. Welcome back to Life Journey Production Studios. And in this video, we're going to take a quick look at the ATEM Software Control Update 9.5. Now, I'm running 9.51 right now, just to let you know. And we're going to take you through some of the new features that I think are pretty exciting. The first one we're going to look at here is this ability up here under Outputs. You can see I have it open. You now have this third choice, and it's called Webcam Output. Now, if you have a um, extreme or extreme ISO SDI model, you're going to see these updates showing you all the inputs. I'll go over here and connect to my ATEM Mini Pro here, and I'll show you the options you'll have if you have an ATEM Mini, ATEM Mini Pro, ATEM Mini Pro ISO. There you go. You have multi-view, program, and preview as options. So those are the options for outputs. Again, this is your USB-C out. So if you're in a Zoom call or meetings and or you're going to use OBS, you're able now to choose what output you want to go to the webcam. Now, why that? Why is that important? Well, you could just have your still image output like your media player um, in, in your extreme, and then you could be doing whatever you want in your studio while everybody's waiting for you to go live. When you're ready to go live, you just go up to your web output and you would change that over to your program out. So you could do whatever you wanted in your studio and all they're seeing while they're waiting for you to go live is um, your, your uh, media player out. Or you could have like a hyperdeck and you could just be playing a video countdown from your hyperdeck and then you could be doing whatever you want in your studio and the only feed they're getting is that feed. So that's pretty powerful. So we're back to that page. So now we're gonna look real quickly at some of the other changes. One of the things that I noticed I haven't seen anybody else talking about is if you go over to HyperDex, you get these nice icons now. So I have um, three HyperDex right now. I have the shuttle, which you can see right here, number three. Then I have the HD Pro, and then I have the older um, HyperDex Mini. Keep the, or actually, this is the HD Plus. Then I have the older HyperDex Mini. And you can see you have lots of settings in here. I'm not covering HyperDex, but I have plenty of HyperDex videos here on my channel. But that's one change. Also, I see you have a menu. So um, the maximum was four. It's looking like now that you have all of these pages. So you have two pages of four and one page of two. So you do the math. It looks like now we have the ability to have 10 HyperDex connected. I don't know if that's true, but I, I don't have enough HyperDex to test. But I did notice that that is a availability as well. Under your multi-view, you now have the ability to have webcam out. So I have webcam out set right now. Normally, I'll use this um, setting to be my HyperDeck key, but I, for this video, I changed it to webcam out, and I'll show you that here now. So if I go to this view, then you can see that bottom right is what you're seeing. I have my webcam out down there and that is showing me um my what do i have it set at here we'll go up to webcam out let's close that go up to my webcam out and i have it set to program so like i said if you wanted this to be a still image you could come down here and load a still image which i i do right now um, i have my logo loaded but let's turn the logo off and like i said earlier Let's just load, let's load a still image like my live stream from Tuesday night, the 23rd of July, which is about lights matter. You see before and after images up there on the right-hand side. So let's go now back to the switcher. And then under the webcam out, put, we're going to go ahead and choose my media player one. And now you can see all you're seeing is my media player one. Um, in the bottom right hand um, box. And so that's what everybody that's watching on an OBS stream or a Zoom stream, that's what they would be seeing. So I could send them through that output, whatever I want. So we'll go back to program on that webcam output. And now um, they're gonna be seeing the same thing that you're seeing. So. That feature really does uh, give an advantage. Also, I use it in my studio so I can send my um, program out to my prompter. So I'm actually looking at my program out in my prompter. 
Okay, so well now we have our OBS full screen selected as our scene. We're going to hit the plus icon under sources, and now we want to create a video source. So we're going to go down here, video capture device. We're going to call this full screen. So I could use any of my cameras. And then we're going to click on add existing source by ATEM Extreme. There it is. I'm going to click yes, click OK. There we go. Click OK. Sometimes you have to deactivate it, activate it to get it to fire up. Then we're going to transition. So we're going to right click on this side and I'm going to click full screen to my Elgato prompter. And then I'll show you that it is now on my Elgato prompter. So now I can see exactly what you guys are seeing. So as I change sources, I see it in my Elgato prompter. And this is another incredible feature that's available in this web out of the software controlled by Blackmagic Design. Now, if you have an Elgato prompter, you can put um, your program out full screen and be looking at your program out and into your camera at the same time. Let's go through a uh, multi-view because that is one of the big changes. So we're gonna go down to the bottom little, let me go to this screen real quick. We're gonna go to the bottom down here on the left of your ATEM software control. We're gonna click on the little icon and then HyperDex, which we discussed that you have the pages now and these icons automatically detect what kind of HyperDeck you have. And then if you have any remote control, Blackmagic Design cameras, then you can remote control them. But let's look at MultiView. MultiView has a number of new features. Obviously, it's going to be different on an ATEM Mini Pro, Mini Pro uh, ISO, and we'll look at that in a minute. So here we are in the ATEM Mini Pro, and you can see um, down on the bottom, you can see the ATEM Mini Pro MultiView. So let's just look real quickly at the settings, bottom left-hand corner. Let's go to MultiView in the ATEM Mini Pro, and you can see... You don't have the choice of all the different layouts, but you do get all audio meters all on, all off. You get frame guides all on, all off. You get borders off and on again, and you can change the color of the border if you so desire. There you go, yellow everywhere, and you can turn that off, back on again. We'll change that back to white, which is the default. Um, and then you also have the ability to turn the descriptions on and off. Um, so you can see previews off, now programs off. So I could clear all of these off the screen if I so desired. So now we have, um, let's turn those off in that row. So all descriptions are off the screen. Um, so then I can also go in and turn on these guides can have all the guides on that input. I could have all the guides on that input. I could have them off. I can have them off. So you can see I now have the ability to really rearrange and do what I want with MultiView, even in the A10 Mini Pro. So let's hop back over um, and continue looking at MultiView settings inside the Extreme. But this is the Extreme page. And so you have the ability to do all the boxes or you could just click in one of the areas and have less boxes and then assign it to whatever you wanted to. So if you wanted the old traditional look with all your output or your inputs down here and your preview and program up here, you would just click on these boxes, got preview and program, and then you'd rechange all of these by using the drop down to be all of your inputs. I like it like this. And you can see now that you do have this choice to add webcam output. That was not there before, before the update, but is now. So now one of the windows can be your webcam output. I actually was in a Zoom consult, and for some reason, my client was not seeing any of um, what I was trying to show him. He was only seeing my one main camera, and it was driving me crazy. Everything I switched on in my ATEM wasn't going to him. And finally, I realized that when I was demoing the software live a few weeks earlier that I had changed my webcam output to my main camera. So that's all my client on Zoom was seeing. It didn't matter what I changed on my ATEM. 
he was only seeing that main camera, which is a powerful feature, but it was also very confusing to me, but I figured it out. So you can now have that down there. So now I can look at my multi-view and see what I have assigned to my webcam out so that never happens to me again with a client or in a Zoom call or if you were streaming from computer software, that's a very important feature. So again, a great feature for getting ready to go live as long as you know exactly how to use it, it's very powerful. So we'll close that. And then you have the ability now, these are regular outputs, but if you're using like a preview or program, you have the ability to turn audio on and off. And then with preview, and I want you guys to see what changes when I hit these. So um, look at my preview screen. Um, you can see down there, and there's nothing on preview. Let me put something there that's live. So you, you have something in that window. So now if I click on this little box, I have the ability to put these borders on it. So let's say I just wanted to have a portrait border. There you can see a portrait border now in my preview screen. I can now do a all of the borders. I can also do 16 by nine borders. And then I also can turn the fonts on that section on and off. So see, they're on, now they're off again, now they're on. So there's lots of power in here. And then if you look at the top up here, I can have all the meters on, I can have frame guides all on, I can have borders off, so you can even turn the borders off now. And so, uh, and you also see you have border color ability right here. So I click on the border color, and now I could choose a different border color if I so desired. So I click on, let's say I want red, and then hit OK. And now you can see it's gone to a red border. Now that doesn't help me because I like to be able to see what's live and what's not. So you can see green down there on one camera angle and red down there on the other camera angle. So we're gonna change this back to white. I'm gonna click okay. So now I have the regular white border. So you even have control of the borders. That's another update that's available in the 9.5 um, software. So if you go over here to outputs, you can actually go in here now um, and change your destination. I'll go into my other, I'm recording on here right now, so I can't change it. I'll go into my other extreme ISO and I'll show you this. So on YouTube, you now have the ability to do this YouTube SRT beta. Now I haven't tested this, but there you go. There's another addition in the menu system for that. And then if you scroll down to the very bottom down here, um, you can now sync with Blackmagic Design Cloud. So you can look at the uh, manual and figure out how to set that up, but I could actually be syncing with the cloud, logging into my Blackmagic account right here, and we'll go to um, this view so you can see that better. Let's go like that. So, so again, uh, cancel that. You go down here and you click on this little icon, sync to Blackmagic Cloud. Then you log in and then you would sign into your Blackmagic account there and then it's gonna sync um, to your Blackmagic Cloud account. So you could have someone doing editing while you're live. It's pretty powerful. Those are updates in the 9.5 um, Blackmagic Design software. Now, one other thing that we want to cover here is this um, update. So all you need to do to update to the newest firmware, and if you do the 9.5 or the 9.51, you're going to need to update your firmware. So make sure you're using 9.51. Obviously, if it's July and you're doing this update for the very first time. So just go up to the file at the very top, click on connections, and then I'm going to update the, the my ATEM Mini Pro and my ATEM Mini Extreme ISO 1 are updated. We're going to go to number two. And instead of connecting, cl clicking connect, so you want to click on the ATEM setup icon, and I'm going to be going to this one that hasn't been firmware updated. So hit the ATEM setup, then click on this icon right here. You're going to get the update alert, hit update, and then 
There we go. It is updated. So one of the things to be aware of, if you have a little icon clicked in the systems menu, I'll show you where that is. So we go to my current ATEM and we click on ATEM setup. Click, click done. And if you go into this menu, you're going to see down here a menu item that says allow a utility administration USB only. So if you don't have your USB cable plugged in from your device, like your Mac, your PC, or your laptop plugged into the ATEM, then you won't be able to do the update. You can enable this icon, which will let you update through the internet. Um, so I'm going to enable that now and click save. I want to do that on all of my devices now. So I'll be able to do those updates from um, anywhere in my network. Um, and you actually have to have the USB-C cable plugged in to do that. So we'll unplug it and plug it back in. So now if I go back in here to my ISO number one, I will be able to go down here and change that setting so that and hit save so that I actually can make those changes. The other big update with the firmware is that we can access these devices now from the network. But let's go ahead and hit save and get out of that. And then now we'll close this window. And then I will open up um, my file browser here. And then over here under network, give that a second to open up. letting it discover all of the different devices that are attached now to my network. Here is now the list of my devices. I have ATEM Mini Extreme 1, 2, my ATEM Mini Pro, and then I have some other computers on here. So I do have a hard drive hooked up to my ATEM Mini Extreme ISO number 2. So we're going to click on this. So when this comes up, just type in on Windows. I think it's Mac as well. Just guest, small case, and then again, guest. Double check, make sure I spelled that right, and then click OK. Then you can click down here on the drive, and there's all my files. That is another update. That's pretty much all I was able to discover and find, but I wanted to cover here I cover that here on the channel. So if you want to change up your multi-view and have more options, have the fonts on there, off, have frame guides, you have the ability to do that. You now can assign a webcam out to your ATEM Mini Pro as well as your Extreme. So that USB-C port now becomes pretty powerful. Instead of it only displaying your program, you have more options there. Three in an ATEM Mini. Pro, Pro ISO, and you have all of the list in the extremes up the chain. So thank you, Blackmagic, for doing some really cool firmware updates and giving us lots more features and options available in the Blackmagic design switchers that we all love and we all use on a regular basis. Now, if you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. My name is Keith. Thank you so much for joining me in this video and I hope you'll come back and join us again here very soon. Till next time.